Hey guys, this is Mark from Osseoholic. I'm here with another unboxing review. And as you can see, uh, today I'm going to talk about the EK Predator 240 pre filled CPU expandable liquid cooling system. So basically, what this is, this is the very first all in one from EK Waterblocks. I guess many of you guys do know EK Waterblocks already. Uh, the company has managed to 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 build a, a really good reputation in the custom water cooling community, offering um, yeah basically only high-end products uh, like for instance their CPU blocks, their tubing, the fittings, their their PE radiators, pumps, and everything. Meanwhile, they also have uh, great fans and stuff. So yeah, and they're they're now trying to to put together uh, a really good all-in-one cooling solution. So yeah, let's have a look at the box first. As always, um, it says here overclocking. Yeah, apparently the cooling the cooling solution is quite powerful, so overclocking should be absolutely no problem. It's expandable, so that means there are uh, threaded fittings here, which you can release by just using your hands. You don't even need the gripper or something like that. It's really it's really easy to loosen things up here. Um, and it's supposed to be silent thanks to PWM fans in the end. Um, yeah, okay, they say hovercore. Honestly, I don't know what that means. Uh, Vardar, that's their um, that's their new fans. Uh, Coolstream, that uh, that's basically the radiator series. Supremacy, that's the that's the CPU blocks they're 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 having in their portfolio and ddc that's for the for the pump they're using okay then um there is really not too much to see on the on the packaging apart from yeah what i just told you i mean there are some more pictures uh showing the cpu block from the inside basically the uh the individual products they're offering um, you see, as I, I will show it also when I have the the, the cooling in my the cooling the AIO in my hands, uh, that there is a, a distribution board for the for for fans to attach. Um, yeah, here I have a clear you have a clear view to the to the pump and the reservoir, and yeah the wider fans. So what's uh, interesting to see is here maybe you have a list of all the all the components they're actually using it's all components they they also sell individually in their web shop so it's the supremacy mx block it's a coolstream p240 radiator uh, there are varder f4 120 er fans which rev up to 2200 rpm but what's really cool about these fans is that uh, they they start spinning at around 500 to to 600 rpm and uh, when they're at that at that rpm range they are really really silent basically inaudible um yeah control ek the ek fan pwm controller active with uh four 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 pin fan headers um they're using their zmt tubing that's basically some kind of like a a, a rubberish tubing which is really um, handy if you want to expand uh, the system. Um, the best thing is that it doesn't take a lot of force to, to tighten or release the fittings, but still everything is uh, perfectly sealed. Um, yeah, there are ACF fittings, 10 by 16 millimeter, inner diameter, outer diameter, um, EK coolant EVO, an installation guide, and a syringe with one gram of EK uh, echotherm thermal compound. Apart from that, there is also a, a Torx screwdriver and yeah, another another power cable that uh, you can provide the, the whole cooling unit with additional and with enough juice. So yeah, let's have a look inside the thing. And I have to say, I really like this box. It's it's typical typical EK. Everything has been studied into the detail. Um, and one of these details is here when you open this lid up it says welcome to EK world I just I just personally I like details like this it makes the the, the unboxing experience somewhat somewhat special so yeah okay then here we have the thingy let's put it like this 
then we see that some stuff is going to fall out which is like yeah the manual or here 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 and then a small letter I'll talk about that uh, in a second now I need to put this one yeah so um, yeah as I said there is a nice little manual also very typical for for EK when they do something like this it really looks it looks as nice as the packaging so uh, yeah you can also see that there is an EK Predator 360 available and not just uh, a 240 or just I mean already the 240 is uh, quite powerful um, yeah and you see how to connect everything how to do how to apply a thermal compound and blah 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 and so forth uh, and then they also I don't know if uh, the end customers are receiving this as well uh, or if only the, the reviewers are getting this but uh, apparently EK did some preliminary testing themselves and um, yeah they were running a 4770k uh, overclock to 4.5 gigahertz at 1.23 volts and the 240 millimeter EK Predator uh, scored 49.03 degrees and um, yeah if you compare this for example to a Corsair H100i GTX there you see 53.63 degrees so that's a, a delta T of uh, of 4 degrees between um, yeah these two cooling solutions um, I have to say when I did my testing I I do stock testing on the on the CPU so the CPU clocks at at 4 gigahertz in the end it's not overclocked and not overvolted but um, it's about the same it, it I would say it produces a little bit less um, heat than the setup from from EK but not much and I measured I think it was 49 degrees as well on the CPU so uh, this is this is basically spot on and if you consider that uh, um, the team with these CPUs the 4770Ks the thermal interface material you might heard of might have heard of this that's the that's the thermal paste which is between the the CPU die which you have directly on the CPU and on the PCB I mean and the heat spreader so that is that is pretty crappy in these CPUs and uh, yeah that's not a good heat transfer there so quite a lot is, is, is getting lost is uh, yeah is screwed up there um, yeah also Haswell E with a 5960X they tested it and the, the, the Predator 240 scored 46.43 degrees whereas the Corsair uh, 100i GTX was about uh, 0 0.4 degrees um, the things was the temperatures were about 0 0.4 degrees higher um, yeah basically shows that um, this premium thingy is uh, like uh, basically defining the new the new standard when it comes to to AIOs okay then yeah that's a nice letter to the reviewers on the front side of this um, yeah so if you take the thing out of the box you already notice the packaging is different from all the other all-in-ones you can buy um, most uh, all-in-ones come in a standard packaging especially if they're Aztec based um, yeah this is uh, pretty different uh, consists of two pieces you just remove the, the top lid yeah apparently put it aside and then you see the the AIO itself and already now I mean it's it's like a, it's 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 a different level but apparently that different level is also cost going to cost a, uh, some different kind of money uh, at the moment these uh, the Predator 240 is listed on uh, a guide house for about 230 euros so that's definitely not cheap but yeah basically it's a it's a custom a pre-field custom loop which is expandable with a powerful enough pump and so on and so forth um, yeah normally this this also comes packed in a in a plastic bag but I already tested the thing so I took everything out of the box um, yeah here you have the the power cable to attach to the yeah to provide the whole thing with with power you have a SATA connector here and some kind of like a PCI Express ish thingy to connect to the distribution board at the at the product 
then here you have uh, your, your Torx screwdriver, your thermal compound and some screws to maybe attach it to a case um, using the fans and yeah so finally enough talking done from about all the delivery and the box and the boring stuff basically so the thing the thing is actually quite heavy I, I don't really know exactly what how heavy it is maybe it's written on the box let me have a quick look so uh, no I can't find it on here you only see the measurements you see that it measures 295 millimeters in length uh, the, the the basically the the, the height is uh, 68 millimeters which is quite a lot um, it's almost uh, the, the the radiator is uh, twice as thick as the slim standard all-in-one radiators you get these days and uh, no I can't find I can't find a weight but if I were to guess I would say it's somewhere around uh, two kilograms for for the entire thing so yeah what you see here now is the EK Coolstream radiator um, it's got uh, a nice uh, layer of paint um, it's it's very it's it's very durable I'd say it's quite tough to scratch um, you can see here a a fill port so if you decide to to expand the thingy you will have to drain uh, yeah you have to drain the water um, if we continue here you see that power board I've been talking about so here you have the distribution for for up to uh, four four fans but in this case it's two fans and the pump um, here you actually well, I have to make sure that I don't scratch too many things here um, you have the, the power connector then we have these nice EK Varder fans which received some uh, additional uh, naming EK Varder Predator um, two of them are pre-installed everything is wired very neatly with some zip ties everywhere so really nicely done um, you have another fuel port over here um, if you want to I mean if you refill the, the thing then you best do it via, via this thing here because um, this is the, the actual reservoir whereas this is the is the pump it's a it's a DDC pump uh, which is definitely powerful enough to uh, to provide such a loop or even a loop with a with an additional graphics card uh, inside uh, with with enough with enough flow so yeah if we continue one interesting thing when I when I use this one I use this one to uh, to cool a 980 Ti Poseidon uh, and uh, I, I noticed that these here they are you can rotate them and that makes it very handy when you when you want to remove the tubes I'm not gonna do this because the, the thing is now uh, filled with water so I don't want to spill everything over here but it makes it really nice also if you position the, the, the block somewhere in your case I guess you see that the, that the fittings up here uh, they are rotating now so that's really that's really a nice thing to see. I've never seen this on any other all-in-one cooling. Um, yeah, very cool thing to have. Good thinking of EK. And uh, yeah, apparently you can attach uh, another two fans here for a push-pull configuration. If you think you need even uh, more airflow for your for your water cooling. But honestly, personally, I do not really like push-pull because if you go to a certain um, RPM level I think it's somewhere between 1200 and 1500 you hear that uh, the, the fans which are blowing the heat out or sucking the heat through the, the radiator which is these in, in this case uh, you can hear them kind of like cut the air and I really I try to do everything to avoid this kind of noise actually these these fans they would rev up to 2200 rpm so if you do some overclocking or use this thing on a test bench and you don't really care about the noise then uh, go with the 2200 otherwise just uh, attach them to a pwm header and they will automatically be 
uh, regulated down to, to something, I think it was a thousand RPM or 900 RPM. And that that um, speed, you, you can't really hear these, these fans at all. Uh, what you do hear a little bit is the pump. Um, it's not your usual kind of, of pump noise, which you have with all-in-one coolers. Which normally, it's like a, um, a, a even even if you see in the measurements that the, the thing is overall silent, an all-in-one cooling, you can still hear the, the pump because it's a different frequency. But uh, this frequency is like in the in the lower hertz range, so it's not this kind of a, a beeping, squeaking noise. Um, yeah, but still you can you can hear it over over the fans. But if you have the thing in a case, you you won't be able to uh, to hear the pump out of the case. So yeah, a few words about about the block. Um, this is a EK's Supremacy MX or MX block. And it comes with a nice faceplate. I already managed to, because of whatever reason, to scratch it a little bit. Um, you can see there is a, a copper surface, and yeah, if you if you've not used it, it's uh, perfectly clean with a mirroring finish. But I've already used it, so mirror mirroring finish is gone. Um, and what's also interesting is, and very important to know, this uh, this cooler is only suitable for Intel platforms, and uh, the mounting is uh, is pretty simple. You get a backplate in the in the delivery, which I unfortunately uh, didn't put back in the in the package. Um, with socket 1150X, you use uh, this part of the thread and go to the uh, through the through the socket mounting holes and and screw the and tighten the the block to to the backplate. If you're if you're using an X99 platform with a socket 2011 or X79, then this this part of the threads is being used, and yeah, apparently you can apply enough pressure thanks to these, but also not too much thanks to these springs here. And yeah, if you if you do wish so, you can even uh, illuminate the block with with LEDs. There are LED ports. Um, on this block there is a total of two actually so yeah you can also make things look really really nice so yeah I think that's it for with my unboxing review on the EK Predator 240 I hope you enjoyed it I hope it was interesting and uh, yeah as I said I think this is a uh, one hell of a great product but as I said it's a uh, it comes with premium pricing so yeah, but you get all the benefits from uh, from a customizable loop. Yeah, as I said, interesting product, and I personally uh, I like it, and I would definitely buy it. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and maybe even share the video. Thank you very much. Bye bye, guys.